headset in an online shop just before the final click. How does it really look like? Naomi Kempfer knows. <laughs> Where's my slide? Okay. Uh, .mgx uh, by Material Eye, that's uh, what I present. .mgx, that reminds us a bit of uh, file extensions, uh, something like uh, .jpg or uh, mp3. So JPEG, that stands for image. MP3, that stands for music. .mgx, what does that stand for? Magics. .mgx is short for magic. It comes from magic's software. Now, .mgx is, in fact, a file extension of a product that magically is digital, but magically you can print out. So similar to MP3, if I would give you a CD with a .mgx file on it, you have a product on that CD. Now, that is a bit of magic. The name of our company, by the way, that is Materialize, speaks for itself, Materialize. Now, this is a piece by Arik Levy. Arik made this firecracker for us. It demonstrates a little bit what the magic is about. There is no other way to produce this but by our technologies. If you think about the regular technologies, most of us, we don't even know how this box is made. But when we look at the firecracker, we for sure realize there is something not possible here. Either you have to glue all these sticks together but if you have to mold something like that, forget it. That's not going to work. So we always take a digital file. Here you see a digital lily and transfer it to a real lily. So that is kind of a magic. It's uh, called transformation or dichotomy of alchemistry, right? We take digital data and we make it real. So we make the dream become real. How does it work, magic's software? represents, in fact, every three-dimensional entity by what we call a mesh or small triangles. If we look very closely, and if you look at your skin, you can see that every surface or every skin can be represented by small triangles. And you know who thought about this? This was already invented by Fibonacci a few good hundred years ago. The process works by slicing, in fact, your three-dimensional file and adding layer by layer by layer. So that means that every step of the process would be adding another layer to your print until the full print is made. Here again, we're designing a three-dimensional file. It has its own shape in 3D space, in the cyberspace. It has its own flexibility. And it is all made of one piece. So from this cyberspace, we bring it to the magic software. We create a .mgx file. Complex as it may be. And from there, we print it on our machines. So it's a bit like an inject printer, only here we work with powder. Infrared laser beams conglomerate these pieces of powder until we get the object, and the object comes out of the printer. How fascinating is that? We can also print in liquid surfaces. This is a print for Ronarag, and you can see the UV laser beam rendering like magic, like science fiction. It's like a bit uh, a God's touch rendering that. Now look at the quin shape, how intricate that is. This is made of one continuous surface. Or some other designs by Arik Levy, or the bunny lamp, or the chaos. Some incredible shapes, because we're just adding three-dimensional molecules of material, one on top of the other, and are able to create whatever we want. We can take a file, replicate it, scale it down, scale it up, reproduce, and make from a lamp a piece of jewelry or a vase. Every part can be different because we just print it. 
It doesn't matter to us if we print two pieces that are the same or incredible, a lot of other pieces that are very different. It's possible to customize a product. It's all digital. It doesn't matter to us if we're gonna print it like this or like that. Imagine you can make your own choices. You can decide how you want to design your product online. If you wanna have your tentacles thin or fat, you can just modify it. It's all digital. And then you extract your MGX file and you make a product out of it. Now, if a product is digital, what does that mean? Do we go to a CD shop to buy our chairs? Do we download products from internet? Do we call Ross Lovegrove and say, hey, Ross, can you email me your new bottle? What does that mean? If we can interact with product design, does that mean that we are also IPRL holders of the new coming products? We're talking today also a lot about uh, global warming, creating waste. So one answer is we're personalizing design so that you will be more attached to your product. But maybe in the future, you won't be buying a product. You will just be buying the DNA of the product, the digital equity of your product. Here are some examples of chairs. We can just make anything, anything by digital information. So that's it. Materialize MGX. Thank you very much.